This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? If I talk too loud, usually it's too soft. But if I'm too loud, let me know. So I talk very loud. Um, so we saw at the last talk who was a blogger. Uh, who here is a designer? Okay. Who here is a developer? Who here is a project manager or some other role? All right, great. So I want I these meetups are very diverse, as you saw. We had a whole uh, mix of different types of people. So everybody will get something out of this. I always try to aim to the middle so that everybody can find something valuable in my talk. So hang with me, even if you're not code heavy in what you do, um, you'll still learn something, and I, hopefully it'll help you guys in your business as well. Um, so unlike Tom, I'm gonna encourage you to follow best practices. <laughs> so coding standards and best practices are important and why you should follow them. Um, so first, a few things. Um, I work at Boston University. I'm a developer there. Uh, we have a really great team. Uh, we're empowered to do really cool things every day. Um, if you have any interest or you just want to learn more about us, feel free to go on BU, uh, is it bu.edu slash ID. Um, we have job listings on there if you're looking, uh, if you just want to learn more about the university or about how uh, my department plays a role in BU's online presence, which is almost entirely WordPress, so that's really cool. Um, my home meetup is Rhode Island, so if you guys came, who came to WordCamp Boston? All right, great. WordCamp Rhode Island, all new speakers, all new topics, check it out. It's only $20, it's, you can't really get any, any better than WordCamps. All right, so we're going to talk about coding standards and best practices and how they can help limit problem, eliminate problems, um, save your company money, make your processes much easier to follow, much more streamlined. Um, and I always, I've always liked this saying, you can lead a horse to, to water, but you can't make it drink it. So in this talk, I'm going to try to do both. I'm going to try to show you the water, and then I'm going to convince you to drink it. So part one, I'm going to teach you uh, what the coding standards and best practices are and why they're important, show you the water. And then I'm going to do my sales pitch, make you drink up, show you why you should use these concepts in every project you have, even if that's not WordPress. Um, and then I will help you pitch this to your leadership or your, the rest of the people in your company so that you can convince them that it's a great idea that everybody should follow these as well. So when I was putting together my slides, I came across this rule. It's called the 90-90 rule. And way back in the 80s, Tim Cargill said, uh, the first 90% of code accounts for the first 90% of the development time. The remaining 10% of the code accounts for the other 90% of the development time. In case you are not a developer, estimating development time is very hard. Um, that's where a lot of times companies will go over budget is they way underestimated or they just didn't really understand all the parts of the project that would have to be completed. Um, so you want to limit your variables as much as you can. Segment as much things into, as many things into smaller pieces as you can so that you can more accurately estimate these things. Um, you don't want it to be harder than it needs to be. You don't need to um, rebuild the wheel in your projects. And that's one thing that coding standards and best practices will help you with. So part one, we're gonna inform and educate you. What are coding standards? Coding standards or conventions are sets of guidelines for specific programming languages that recommend style, practices, methods, and all other aspects of programming languages. So when we talk about programming language here, we're gonna be talking in a WordPress context, so more of a software context. Um, WordPress, as I'm sure you are familiar, uses CSS, JavaScript, HTML, PHP, MySQL, there's a bunch of different languages. They all have their own best practices, but for the talk we're going to talk about uh, just WordPress as a whole and best practices within the software. So these conventions will usually cover things such as file organization, declaration, statements, how to space out your characters, um, how to use your braces properly, how to build your classes. Any of that stuff can be defined in coding standards. So for example, 
if you look at the WordPress CSS standards, important, you should av avoid using that as all, at all costs, except for your WordCamp talks, your WordPress meetup talks. Um, you, and even if you do end up having to use it, you should document why you use that so that people coming in after you can understand your reasoning and why you used it. Another example is braces should be used for all coding blocks, even when they're not required. So if you are not familiar with code, if you only have one line within an else or an if block, you technically don't have to use a bracket. But using brackets makes it more readable. It helps eliminate any uh, un unintended errors, uh, like that line accidentally being executed no matter what. Um, it just makes it more easier to read, follow what's going on, what belongs where. Um, and like I said, single line statement controls are prohibited. So this would be examples of stuff that you would want to fix and you would want to include braces even if it is not technically necessary. So what are best practices? Best practices are sets of informal rules that the software development community has learned over time which can improve the quality of software. So I bolded learned because that's really the most important word in that sentence to me. Um, best practices are all things that everybody before you has sat behind their computer at midnight because they did something that they shouldn't have and they realized that this isn't, this isn't a good practice. We shouldn't be doing this. There's a better way. So this guy, he already had his pain so that we can benefit from his best practices. So, for example, we never want to get every single post of a post type in a WP query. This is very bad. It might work when you have a blog and you have 100 posts and you don't get much traffic, but say one day you, 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 you write all day long and you come up with 50 more posts and then you hire another writer and then before you know it you're up to 10,000 posts. This will get all 10,000 posts in one query. So that's not efficient, that's not scalable, and this is a best practice that you can use to help prevent issues that might come up. So the right way to do this would say, okay, let's use a really high limit that we're probably not going to reach. It's 100. But if you get to a point and you do have more than 100, there's always a way you can go back and set up a while loop and make sure that you get all the posts that you need. Or perhaps you uh, cache it differently. So this will help prevent your site from going down by using this best practice. And as said in the definitions, best practices plus coding standards increase your software and your website quality. So now you might be saying to yourself, this sounds really time consuming. How am I going to pay someone or how am I going to get the time to sit there and write these out for, for, for my team, for my company, for myself? Well. You don't have to worry. Um, WordPress is open source, which is really great. So WordPress already has all these things documented for you. Um, there's a ton of tools that have been open source to help you with this, uh, code sniffers, and things that will automatically detect issues with your code, whether it be a best practice, something that you should avoid and, and it warns you, or your, your coding standards. It fixes the spaces for you automatically so that you know, maybe there's a commit and someone didn't really follow all the rules it will fix it for you. So that's really great. So, now the sales pitch. I'm gonna help you, I'm going to convince all of you to use coding standards, and then you're gonna go and convince your team and your boss and everybody that we need to pay more attention to these. So what will these things help me with? Your code's gonna be more readable. Uh, your compatibility is gonna be better. So when the new version of WordPress comes out, if you use the best practices and coding standards, there's pretty much a 100% chance that your code is going to be supported in the next version of WordPress. Um, there are instances where that's not true, and those are very well documented. You get, as developers, there are blog posts on the WordPress, uh, Make WordPress website that tell you, hey, this is going away. Um, usually, they will put um, warnings in the code so that if you open up your error log on your server, you'll see, oh, this is going away, or this, the use of this has changed, you need to update your code. But it will never break your site if you follow these best practices. Um, it's more maintainable. All these things will happen, and it will help you avoid things like this. How many, how many people have gone into a project 
thinking it was really simple, and then discovered that this is what you were working with, something like this. Yeah, it's, it's happened to everyone. And we've all done it ourselves. We're all guilty at some point. So one of the things, in addition to coding standards helping that with proper spacing and indentation and all that, would be documentation. Um, you want to document your code as much as you can. Um, proper documentation, it will tell you what the code is intended to do, what it will return uh, as output. Um, it will tell you when it's executed, what it's meant to be used for. Um, all these things can be, can be, uh, can be uh, told to you through these doc blocks at the top. WordPress has an actual, uh, there are different parts to the WordPress coding standards, and there actually is a PHP and a JavaScript documentation doc in there. So it tells you exactly how WordPress core does it, um, how you should do it, and as well as all the coding standards. So there's one for each language. It's very easy to go in and have access to that. Proper documentation helps code developers not have to be unstoppable, mind-reading superheroes and heroines. When your code is not documented, someone has to look at your code and try to figure out what you were thinking. And that's not, that's, that costs money, that costs time um, and frustration. So you want to use those doc blocks to put what's in your mind there. Why are you doing this? What's, what's supposed to happen? What, under what scenarios? And this will help everybody and help your code be more maintainable. And this will make code reviews easier, debugging errors and issues more easier, uh, refactoring code easier. All these things will help you save time down the line. Um, now how to help your business. Onboarding employees is tough. Hiring outside vendors is tough. Everybody does things differently. And if you look for people that follow these best practices, it's a lot easier to, 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 to undertake these things. Um, you have a new employee that starts. You know, maybe you have them sit and read through your customized version of the best practice standards from WordPress. It gives them a starting point. It helps them have something to refer to if they have questions. They may not have to bother this period all the time. Um, when you are looking for vendors, uh, they will, you could just ask that, hey, do you follow the WordPress coding standards? If you also, your company also follows that, then you know that their work will be easily interchangeable with your code and it would, it would work very nicely together. Um, it will also save you time because you won't have to, you know, you get this code and it's, yep, yeah, it's all done, it's all set, and then you look at it and this isn't right. You know, they're, they're getting all posts in one query. They're, uh, they're not caching their, their, their external requests. Um, so this will help you find people that are up to the same standard of work that your company is in your, in your own work as well. Um, other things that everyone will get the benefit of is that when you open source your project, so say you make this really cool WordPress plugin and a lot of people say, wow, that's really useful. You know, are, are you going to release it for everyone? And you choose to, it'll make that experience more rewarding because people are going to recognize that, hey, people spent a good amount of time on this. Um, they follow best practices. I want to use it, but it, I need this little part added to it. And they'll be more likely to go in and add to it and submit it back to you. And then as a community, that will help your, 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 your little baby that you made grow. Um, it will make your, the intimidation of contributing to WordPress core far less intimidating because they follow all those best practices. So once you become comfortable in your own work at your own pace of recognizing these patterns and these practices, uh, you, you won't be as intimidated when you go to, you want to contribute back to WordPress. Um, and then as I mentioned before, there's a lot of automated tools that you can use to do really cool things. Um, I mentioned the PHP code sniffer, which will fix your code and your spacing if there's any issues. Um, you can get into PHP unit testing. All these things, are there are WordPress um, specific versions of these different components that are meant to work with best practices. So if you use these best practices, you will have a much less of a barrier of entry to, to getting these into your own projects because they'll just work. And then finally, everybody say it with me, I will not write any more bad code. 
So thank you. Um, I have the links here. I will make sure that this gets up onto the Meetup site. Um, the WordPress best practices that I showed you. Um, I don't know anybody here from TenUp. TenUp is an agency. Uh, they're distributed, but they do a lot of really cool projects, and they have a very, very good uh, engineering best practices. They are those guys behind the computer. They have, in enterprise level, they have dealt with these situations, and they help uh, build WordPress, and they help also to build these best practices and. Uh, they, their, their guide is very useful. They have CSS, PHP, all different kinds of best practices. Um, the WordPress VIP best practice. Uh, WordPress VIP is uh, enterprise level hosting by Automatic. Um, if you're not familiar, you should go check it out. They host things like CNN, um, MS, uh, NBC Sports Blogs, uh, TechCrunch, all these big websites go to them to host their websites. Um, they have their own v uh, best practices which are much more nitpicky because they are very particular about what goes on their, um, on their, their hosting platform. Every line of code that gets committed to their hosting platform is reviewed by someone at Automatic. So they adhere to these best practices very strictly because they, they've been whittled and, and built over time um, and they work. So that's another reason to follow them. And of course, if you want to learn more about BU, you have the link down there. Okay, any questions? Yep, so we, um, all of our stuff is version controlled with Git. Um, we have an internal deploy process tool that we built, and um, we uh, do wireframing. We have all these different internal practices. Um, when I came on, one of my first things to do was to create the BU WordPress best practice guide, and we realized that we don't need to rewrite this. It's there. We just need to have uh, kind of an addendum of things that, are system specific for us that we need to be aware of. Um, and so that was my first task and, and we realized that it, it's just not worth rewriting all this stuff. It's out there, it's curated, it's open source, everybody puts their time into it. Um, so we just had a few small things like how do we access our Git repos and all that stuff that we added. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering like if you, um, if you're not like, obviously a lot of these tools are used for like, you know, certain, you know team members like collaborating with and tracking your code and everything. Um, but if you're working on, say, you know, client sites that are in uh, GoDaddy, right? Mm -hmm. or Google's or whatever. Um, I was wondering if there's any tools out there um, that would be um, used for maybe, uh, I don't know, doing some kind of, not like code shift, but like some kind of like um, best practice instead of just like downloading it from the server. And then, because right now I download it, then I'll work on it, like, um, and I'll put it into. Mm -hmm. and use it there and then, you know, put it in GitHub and, and track it. But I'm just wondering if there's any other tools out there. Um, so I use, I, I, all my personal projects are either in GitHub or Bitbucket I use sometimes. Um, Bitbucket has a new tool called Pipelines, and what that is is every time you commit to the repo, it'll actually do a build in the, on a Docker instance, and it will, uh, it, you can set it up to FTP it to your server if you want. Um, is that what you're looking for, like a tool like that? What, what was it? It's called Pipelines. It might, yeah, I'll look into that. that yeah, they're, they're, they're all very different, and they all do different things, um, and they integrate with different services differently. Um, right. So you just kind of, it's just a, a trial and error type thing. Right. Um, I used to use Beanstalk, and then, you know, I just didn't have enough personal projects to, uh, to justify the expense, you know, but it was really great. Um, and that was a repository that had deployments built in if you just configured it in the interface. Um, so yeah, just don't be afraid to try things. You know, a lot of things have free trials. You can try them out and see what works for you. Um, but what works for us is going to be different. It works for you and for you and for you. So you just have to really try things out and see what's best for you. Anybody else? Yes. You know, like you said about not using important, mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you, but so many, I feel like so many um, plugin developers make it so you have to. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I just. Yep. So one of the best practices in WordPress is to always enqueue your styles and your scripts. So basically, if you think of enqueuing, it's basically like taking a, uh, a ticket at the deli. Yeah. And you say, hey, my script is called this and I need it to load on the page. 
okay, get in line. Then I will come with my plugin and I say, hey, I need jQuery as well, and this is the name of my script. Okay, get in line. And then if they do that best practice, it's very easy for someone to come in and say, hey, DQ this, we don't want it to load. Um, so that's another example of, hey, maybe the CSS wasn't done very well, but if they follow other best practices, then you'll be able to more easily modify that and override different things. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I also kind of, I have a funny story about the VIP team. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who works on it, and one day I, I had this old site of a client that got hacked, and I showed it to her, and she's like, I've never seen that. We don't allow <laughs> that to happen on our stuff. So I, I totally back up what you're saying about their picky standards. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And there's there's also best practices as far as data sanitization and escaping things that you put on the page. Um, there's a whole ton of functions in WordPress that will take uh, a text string and make sure that there's nothing malicious in it before you print it to the page or save it to the database. Um, so I highly encourage everybody to look into <laughs> those as well. Um, I think that those will also those are definitely listed in the VIP best practices. Anybody else? No? Tom, you have anything else tonight? There's still more swag out there. You know, we more swag. Everybody go grab it. Thank you.